Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be going over the basics of solving linear equations. So why don't we begin right away? Okay, so the equation x plus 3 is equal to 0 is a linear equation. And what does it mean to solve a linear equation? Because that's what this video is about. Well, it basically means that you are getting x to be on its own. In other words, you are isolating for x. So in this case, how would you want to get x to be on its own? Like, How would you do that? Well, we're thinking that it'd be really nice to subtract 3 from the left-hand side, because we know that 3 minus 3 is 0, and we'd just be left with x. So that'd be good. But it's very important that whatever we do to one side of the equation, we do to the other side of the equation. So. If we're subtracting 3 from the left-hand side, that means that we also have to subtract 3 from the right-hand side in order for the equation to remain true. So I'll put a line here just to indicate that we're going to the next step. So that will leave us with x plus 3 minus 3 is equal to 0 minus 3. And we'll see here that 3 minus 3 is equal to 0. So those two 3's cancel out like this and we're left with x is equal to negative 3. So we can box that out. So that is all we have to do to solve that linear equation. We recognize that we want to subtract 3 from one side to cancel out the 3. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other, so we subtracted 3 from the other side, and we were left with x is equal to negative 3. So notice how those 3's cancelled out to get x to be on its own. What if we were given x minus 4 is equal to 1? Well, it's the same idea. So how do we get rid of that negative 4 so that x is on its own? Well, we want to add 4 to the side, right? Because we know that negative 4 plus 4 is 0. But whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. So that means we're going to add 4 to the right-hand side as well. Once again, I'll put a line here to indicate that we're going to the next step. So we're left with x minus 4 plus 4 is equal to 1 plus 4. And once again, we notice that negative 4 plus 4 is equal to 0. So these cancel out, and we're left with x is equal to 5. Once again, we can box that out. And again, that's all we had to do to solve for these equations. So it'd be really nice to have some method to check our answers, just to quickly see if they're correct. The way we're going to do that is by subbing the solution for x into the equation. So if we look at the first example, we established that x is equal to negative 3. So if we plug that back into the equation, we get negative 3 plus 3 is equal to 0, which is 0 is equal to 0. And we know that that statement is correct. 0 is indeed equal to 0, which means that we got the right answer, and so we can give ourselves a little happy face. Same idea with the next example. We got x is equal to 5, so why don't we try subbing that in to the equation we get 5 minus 4 is equal to 1, which is 1 is equal to 1. And 1 is indeed equal to 1. We know that that's correct. And so we can, again, give ourselves a happy face because we got that correct. If we had gotten some value for x, and then from that ended up getting something like 2 is equal to 1, well, 2 is definitely not equal to 1. So we know that's false, and we would realize that we messed up somewhere, and we got to like, fix that up. So your check is basically to see if you get a statement that makes sense. So 0 is equal to 0 makes sense, 1 is equal to 1 makes sense. You should get a number being equal to itself. Okay, so we just dealt with addition and subtraction. What if we have something like 2x is equal to 4? Well, how would we get rid of the 2 in that case? Well, the answer is to divide that side by 2. And remember, whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we divide the other side by 2 as well. And that leaves us with 2 over 2 multiplied by x gives us 4 over 2. And so the reason why we divided the left-hand side by 2 is because we know that 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we can imagine the 2's cancelling out to give us 1. And we know that 1 times x is just x. So we're left with 1 times x is equal to 2, or x is equal to 2. And once again, that is our answer. We could do another check. We have x is equal to 2, 
and we can plug that into the equation. We'll have 2 times 2 is equal to 4, or 4 is equal to 4. We know that that statement makes sense because 4 is equal to 4, and we give ourselves a happy face. All right. One last thing. So what if it was division? Well, it's the same kind of idea with multiplication. We want to multiply this first side by 3. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do the other. So we multiply the other side by 3 as well. And we can write it out like this. So we will have 3 times x over 3. And so the reason why we multiply that side by 3 is because we know that 3 over 3 is equal to 1. So they essentially cancel out. And so on the other side, you'll have 2 times 3 is 6. So 3 over 3 essentially cancels out to leave you with x over 6. And you can box out your answer like that. And once again, you can go ahead and check your answer. We have x is equal to 6. So we plug that into the original equation. We know that 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. So we get 2 is equal to 2. And we know that that is correct. All right, so that's all I wanted to go over for this video. In the next video, we'll be going over two-step linear equations. And those types of questions will essentially be based off the techniques that we used over here. So for now, as always, thanks for watching.